In the last section, we saw how you can represent data to the neural network. You see how data is structured for the input and the output of either a neural network or a support vector machine. In this section, we're going to take a look at more complicated data than the exclusive OR operator that we saw in the first section. We're going to look at two broad categories of problems that you might want to represent to a neural network. In particular, we're going to look at classification and regression. Classification is when you want to represent a, you want the output from the neural network to represent some sort of a group. You're going to give the neural network input and you want to know what group that data is going to actually fall into. Let's look at some examples of when you might want to use classification with a neural network or other machine learning constructs such as a support vector machine. OCR, optical character recognition, is a very good example of this. OCR, you're going to have pixel data, which is always in a grid. And you're going to take this grid data and represent it to the input neurons of the neural network. Say, for example, you had an 8 by 8 grid. That is going to give you 64 pixels that are going to go into the neural network. So 64 input neurons. This is going to get grouped into 26 output neurons. The 26 output neurons are the 26 English letters that you want to the neural network to be able to recognize. Now this is ignoring uppercase, lowercase, and digits. You would have to pick one particular case that you are representing. Another type would be a type of something. For example, tree type. The type of tree that is growing on land. One example that I show you on my website is how to take data from the US National Forest Service where they have actually about 50 or so, it's not exactly 50, inputs. And from that, you're going to get seven tree types. So you're going to feed the neural network such things as the type of soil that it's on, the elevation of the land, how close it is to water, whether a forest fire has struck recently or not. And this will tell you what type of tree is on the land. Now, the Forestry Service gives you thousands upon thousands of samples of these, and you train the neural network with those. And the idea is you give it some inputs for an acre that it's never been trained on, and it should be able to tell you what type of tree would actually grow there, at least based on the data that you had for the other, for the other um, acres. Another example might be a credit group. Say you're a bank and you have people applying for loans and you want to know whether you're going to give them a loan or not. So you're going to break them into three categories, good, medium, and poor. If they're good, you're going to give them the loan. If they're medium, you're going to probably have some human look at the loan application and make that decision. If they're poor, then no way, you're not going to give them a loan. We're going to see, we're going to look at this example a little bit closer and see the literal numbers that we would actually feed to the neural network. So for this example, let's take a look at the actual input that we would feed to the neural network. In this case, we're going to look at three different criteria that we have on a person. We are going to look at their income. We're going to look at their age. We're going to look at the number of years that they've been at the residence. 
using all three of these together, we are going to decide which group they're in. And the group is going to be, like I said before, good, medium, and poor. So this neural network is going to have three inputs and four outputs. So let's focus on the inputs for now. For this, what we're going to do is look at a typical person. So let's just say that this guy has 50,000 in income. His age is 35. And the number of years that he's been at his residence is five. Now I've said that you can't just simply send big numbers like this into the neural network. We need a way to make these numbers be in a range. For this range, we are going to want them in zero to one. You could also use negative one to one, and there's various reasons for doing each of these. When we look more at normalization, we will see how you pick a good range for these. For now, we're going to look at a very simple way to normalize. Normalize is the process of taking these numbers and making them be in a reasonable range. A really, really quick, easy way to normalize, and there's better ways to do this. We'll learn about that in later episodes, but is simply to put divide one by the number. This will cause you to, this causes each of these numbers to be conveniently in the range between 0 and 1. So what we're going to do here is 1 over 50,000 is equal to 0 0.000. .000 2, 1 over 35 is going to be 0 0.0285, and 1 over 5 is 0 0.2. So these are the actual numbers that you're going to feed into the neural network. Okay, now we're going to look at the output from the neural network. The output in this case is going to be these groups that we were dealing with. So let's look at this. We're going to have three output neurons. Let's see how we actually represent groups to the output neurons. We're going to have O1, O2, and O3. And in these categories, it's not a straight line, but um, we're going to have the good, medium, and poor. We're going to use output neuron 1 to represent the good person. We're going to use output neuron 2 to represent the, bad, uh, the medium person, and we're going to use output neuron 3 to represent the poor person. So in this case, we're going to have 1 and 0 for the others. This is a very simple way of representing the data to, for the output neurons. You have 0 for the output neuron if it does not fall into that group, 1 if it does. So good has 1 is the output neuron, because output neuron 1 corresponds to good. 1 for output neuron 2, which corresponds to medium. And 1 in output neuron 3 for poor. So basically, you're going to only see one output neuron have a value of 1 for each of these. This is how you use classification. Regression, we're going to take a look at in the next section. The input works about the same, but you represent your output neurons differently.